8.51. Now, the last two years, TV presenter Gabby Logan has been talking candidly about her life on her podcast, The Midpoint. Its purpose is to help everybody else navigate the halfway stage of life. But for Gabby's husband, Kenny, it has achieved far more than that. After listening to an episode, he was pushed to take action that might have actually saved his own life. Gabby and Kenny are here on the sofa with us this morning. Morning. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to let you tell everybody at home what this latest episode of the podcast is about, why it was so important that you had this chat, Kenny. So um, I was... Uh, Gabby's obviously got her podcast and um, I stumbled across it through accident. So as I was going You're through... You're an avid listener. I'm a massive listener of it. And it was actually about menopause, about women, the hormones are like falling off a cliff when a man takes longer to, to fall off the cliff. And as I was um, going through all this in my head, I thought, I mean, what about me? What's happening to me? And Gabby said, why do you not get checked? And so I went to get a sort of wellness check. I got the wellness check and I sat down with the guy and he said to me, right, everything's fine, your, your hormones are fine. He said, but your prostate is high. Your PSA. your PSA is high. And I said, what does that mean? He goes, well, it's to be a prostate, you probably should get checked. So I got checked and very quickly, within about three or four months, I had a biopsy and they said, there's something there, but you know, we'll just keep an eye on it, but the chances of it happening. The big figure he said to me, 40% of your mates have got this, they just don't know they've got it. And then this but year... But they'll live with it, you know. They'll live with it. A lot of men will live with it and not know they've got and it. And then this year, February the 7th, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, which was a huge shock. So I had to make some decisions, three decisions. One, you'd go for uh, chemo, uh, radiotherapy and um, take it out or the other... Brachytherapy. Brachytherapy. So I ended up deciding to take it out. So I'm now three months since the operation, had the prostate out. I'm probably 95% back to normal, maybe 90% back to normal. Um, hard, because when you're told you've got cancer and you didn't, I, I literally fell over it. I didn't see it coming. No symptoms whatsoever. I had to go looking for it. I think that was a shocking thing for both of us, that he, the day before he went in for his operation, I'm jumping, jumping forwards a bit, he'd done a bike session. He had no pain, yeah. he had no symptoms. And to go in and have surgery, which is, it's a really invasive surgery and obviously it takes a long time to recover from, you know, you're going to feel a lot worse after it. Yeah, I was pretty um, mattered after it. <laughs> but, yeah. but very, very, very lucky. Mm, extremely lucky. I mean, it's obviously a subject that's really close to our hearts here yeah. on yeah. BBC Breakfast because we lost our Bill last week who had prostate cancer. He died at the age of 66. And the thing that is so important is getting checked, talking to people about it, and the thing I think probably people watching this morning will, will think is, you know, people are looking out for symptoms. You had none. Don't look, if you're looking for symptoms, it's, well, I said to the specialist, I said, it's weird getting this operation, I've got no symptoms. And he said, well, if you had symptoms, the conversation would be different. And so that's the scary that's thing about, the scary thing about it. The, the thing we know about prostate cancer, of course, what well, we know now, I mean, yeah. you become kind of, obviously, you speak to people and you learn, is that men, um, Caucasian men, it tends to be around 50, black men, it tends to be a bit earlier, 45. That's when the PSA needs to be checked. It's a really good test to see whether or not there's something a little bit not right. And then you go for further tests after that. So we know it's happening to men at this age. It's so, a blood test. And it's really simple, That's you know, I think, I think a lot of your friends were put off thinking that it was a bit more invasive yeah. than that, should we say, the yeah. first test. That might happen though. Yeah, <laughs> well, okay. Just so you know. Yeah, it could get but worse. But if it is happening, it's because they found something. And because they're potentially going to save your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, then, and I was through the podcast, listening to Gabby, I think it might have been Davina McCall talking about it, I can't remember. Um, and I just thought, what about me? What's happened to men at this stage? And if obviously women, this whole thing about HRT, but there's, the, ma the man's gone through something too, and one in two people tend to get prostate. And that's why, because you said as soon as you know, he knew and we started going through the kind of the medical side of what was happening to him, he said, I, when I'm through this, I really would like to do an episode because it's about talking, isn't it, and using mm. your platform, and that's, that was your motivation. I want to talk about the podcast, the actual episode, for a moment, because it is staggeringly honest. It, it, it's, it's not like, um, it wasn't what I expected. It was almost like an audio diary because yeah. you started talking to each other about it and recording it right at the very start. And you, Gabby, are so calm. <laughs> How real is that sense of calm? Um, well, because, because it's my job, I suppose I went into work mode a bit and I kind of, 
I kind of sat there, we were in my office, and because I record my podcast there, I was in the same seat that I do all my interviews, so I kind of turned myself into interviewer and tried to talk to Kenny in a way that we could elicit information. I want people to listen to it and learn about it. I, want, I wanted to listen to this podcast myself on February the 8th when Kenny was diagnosed, and that's what I want people to be able to learn something from it. His, his urologist is incredible. Declan, I think, was Amazing, brilliant, yeah. you know, and yeah. the producer of the podcast said to me, you don't often hear consultants talking like that. And he explains brilliantly what is going on with the prostate, why it's important to get it checked, what you can do about it. So really, it's kind of like 45, 50 minutes of information, you know, and of course there is some emotion because... No, it's emotional. The night before, I, I'd sort of... Declan said to me, don't Google it, I'll, yeah. I'll give you all the information. Yeah. So I didn't really want too much information. I wanted to know when my operation was, yeah. what it was going to feel like. And I wanted to just take it as it... Because I've been a sportsman, I used to always just... I, I would take it as it was coming. I didn't want to know too much. Just let me know and I'll just deal with the situation. And I think the night before, it was quite emotional because you start thinking about, is it contained in the prostate? Has it moved out of the prostate? I won't know until Friday if, how, how well has it gone. What's the other damages that can what happens when they take it out? What is my... What's the recovery going to be like? So there's all these questions, and I just kept going on. And I suppose when he said to me after the operation, it came out really well. The nerves are all protected. Um, we think that um, it's not come out. It stayed in within the prostate. He said we've got a blood test in three months' time. But I didn't think about it. Then he brought it up again. We've got to come back for a blood test. So then it came back to me again, going right. And I now need to think about. I hope it's not gone any further. And I'm, I'm lucky it hasn't gone any further. So. I've, I've been cleared with the fact that my blood test three months after is clear. But I went, I didn't go looking for this. This came to me through me just being nosy about something else. And that's your motivation else. to do this, isn't it? Just to say, get checked. Yeah. So I was just going to say exactly that. Sitting here on this sofa this morning, as we're just coming up to nine o'clock, what's your message, Kenny? Go looking for it. If you're 50, I was 48, 49. Go looking for it, get checked. It's a blood test, it's simple. How do you do that? GPs, um... GP, the GP will book you for the blood test, the blood and then test. most of you will be fine, but some of you might need to have further tests. And how are the rest of the family? Um... They're all great. Are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, kids, the kids are... My mum, I didn't tell my mum until... Um, because if my mum's 90, she's really fit, but I didn't... She didn't need to worry about it, and I told her three months... Um, three weeks after, but she did, she did say to me... Um, she started telling about everybody else who was ill at the, <laughs> the same kids, time. The kids have been... Uh, that's not, been that's not his mum, by the way. That's our 17-year-old <laughs> daughter. Yeah. Um, but... She looks well. <laughs> she looks great. Uh, the, kids, the kids have been incredible. They've yeah, been, incredible. been amazing. Um, thank you both for coming in and thank sharing you. your story. Thank you, Sally. Thank you Thanks for so talking much. to us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. And the Midpoint special episode with Kenny will be available from tomorrow. Do listen. You're watching BBC Breakfast. It's 8.59.